today? Salad. Same as every day. You get a lot of high calorie foods around here when they're in training camp right now, so if you're not I'm shocked at that. Uh, if you're not careful, you can uh, bulk up very, very quickly uh, as a coach. How was the uh, scrimmage yesterday? Good. Your vantage point. Good. We got a lot done, a lot accomplished. Uh, you know, put young guys in some game situations, uh, which is what you want to see. Older guys, I think, perform pretty well. Uh, but, you know, I mean, right now, uh, we'll get another big scrimmage Saturday where you see more, and then you really start to get an idea of who's, how you're going to start rotating guys and playing in formation. For, uh, you know, the, the formation that the guys will be on the, on the field this year for. So, uh, you know, that was kind of their after installation experience and let them go play. A couple days right now to review it, and then we'll get it all again on Saturday and in the stadium. And, you know, because the next time we go live, it'll count for real. As you're into two days, you see any young guys start to get worn down a little bit by the extra work? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of those guys, there's a lot of young guys. I mean, college football is very, very different than high school football. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of those guys are just trying to uh, hang on and, and realize of how hard we actually work here. And, uh, you know, I mean, I guess we talk about it all the time. They know that when they come here, that's what they're coming to sign on for. And then when you get into the reality of doing it, it's a little bit different. Anything in particular you're hoping to? I mean, I know there's a lot you want to get done before school starts back, but these last few days of fall camp or just having them just football only? Uh, no, just keep going. Just keep grinding through. You know, I mean, most everything's installed, so just kind of going back and, and being very, very comfortable in doing things. You know what I mean? To master it, you got to do it over and over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, it's just you want to have that great foundation. Uh, going into the season as you go, you know, in a specific game plan. You know, everything that's in right now, you get into a game plan, you're going to cut out uh, probably about 40% of the stuff or even 50% of the stuff that we're using of what we're going to use in each game plan, and then that will tweak from week to week when it gets, in, uh, you know, the specifics of checks and plays and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, so if they have a great foundation of everything because we go and pick and choose out of the menu each week, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a, a lot of comfort for them during the season. A lot of talk about the cornerbacks, obviously, for y'all, but look at the safeties. you got, obviously, Nico back there. You've moved mm -hmm. the quarterback back there some, Lewis Watson. I mean, how, how good do you feel about that group right now? Well, that's good. They're young. You know, I mean, obviously, with Nico back uh, practicing the uh, with us and being, you know, kind of a, after missing spring, you know, I mean, he brings some stability back in there. Um, you know, and then uh, Corey's kind of a, a very intelligent person. Um, you know, and, and we're not settled on him in safety yet. There still might be some more changes with it, but um, you know, I think he, you know his his knowledge, uh, you know, flexibility. He and Banks can go back and forth because they they know the positions. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you know the young guys really now gonna have to step up and step into their own with the Arrington, uh, Jay Hughes, and Kendrick Market. Uh, those guys, you know, stepping up, and then you know the leadership of Lewis Watson having a fifth year senior as well. Of, that's always going to do things the right way and always have a great attitude and you know show those young guys how they how do we expect them to perform. What's it mean to have Broomfield be just so willing after being mainly a cornerback to you know be willing to move around and do whatever? Well, I mean that's what you want in the guys on our team. I mean most our guys they want they want to win and they want to do whatever is best for us to win. So uh, you know whether it's it's Broomfield moving or Banks moving, he's played some safety in training camp. And, uh, you know, and he doesn't blink an eye, you know, it's whatever it takes for the team to win, he wants to do. And that's what it's, uh, that's really the attitude you want in your older guys, and I think that's the leadership you look for, and I think we have that with our older guys. Go back when, you know, Banks is thinking about the NFL, and, you know, he's got a kid, he loves his kid, and he gets mm -hmm. to stay around and be around, you know, everybody for another year. I'm sure that was very important to him when you were talking to him. Oh, was he and I had multiple conversations about it all, and you know I think so many different people had opinions, and so many different people you know put different pressures on him about things, and um, you know I, I think maybe have, having a, a son helped him, you know if if because now he can think of, if he was a father what would he want for his son, and you know that opportunity to come and finish out your career to get a degree, you know to get that college degree and give you a foundation of success. Not just for, you know, 
couple year NFL career, or how, uh, hopefully it's longer. You never know. You know, average your career, the NFL players three and a half years. So, you know, not just thinking short term, but also as, as a father, uh, thinking long term. And uh, he went as a role model for his son, thinking long term. So, uh, you know, I mean, I I know it was tough. I, I told him he made the right decision. Whichever whichever decision he made was the right decision, as long as he did it for the right reasons. And. Uh, you know, so in my mind, he's made the right decision coming back because he did it for the right reasons. Off topic, Dan, I mean, you've talked about it last year and I mean, years prior, but you, how do you approach recruiting in the sense that the kid want, is getting recruited for multiple sports? Um, and he comes to you and says, Coach, I'm getting scouted professionally to play baseball. I'd like to do both. What would you say? Uh, you always want to work with it. You always want to have a plan in place. You know, we're very fortunate here to great relationships between coaches. Right. You know, if you look, John Cohen and I have a great relationship. So guys that want to play multiple sports here at Mississippi State, that's a very easy transition. There's not a, a tug of war sometimes between coaches. And, uh, you know, and I guess I have an experience, you know, with guys like a, a Jeff Demps, world-class sprinter, who's also a starting tailback, of getting used to how you manage and, and recruit those type of guys. Uh, I've done it in the past, so um, it helps, but I, I think having that, you, you can go, you can tell the recruit you have whatever relationships, I guess, people go do that. I think when they come and see, the, you know, how our guys, how we interact with other sports and what a family uh, community, the, the athletic department is, um, then they see for real that it's not, we're not just talking about it, it it's serious. If you have the ability to play two sports, we're going to find a great plan for you to be successful. Wayne Clausell, you know, gained a little bit of weight. You know, he struggled a little bit last year. Um, how's he doing at camp this year? Is he a guy that can you expect to start at like 13 yeah. games and be able to get through it all? He's doing great. You know, I think, you know, last year as a freshman, you know, and in, in starting in the SEC as a freshman is always tough duty. And, uh, you know, now, though, the benefit of that is he has that experience under his belt. You know, and he's in training camp. He, he knows – what's coming on the road ahead. There's a lot of guys don't know what the road ahead's all about. You know, even even some guys that haven't been on the team and but haven't played in games, they don't know the road ahead. And Blaine's a guy, he knows what's about to come uh, ahead of him and, and playing on the on Saturdays in the SEC. So he'll be, uh, um, I, I think he's taken that approach and, and, uh, and improved his game and, and his mindset to be ready for that. Quarterbacks ever, I know you don't, they don't want to get hit, but they ever say, hey, Make us lie for a scrimmage just so they can get used to it. What, what's your stance on that? Because I know you don't want to, don't want to get them touched. But yeah, I mean, if, if we have four of them on scholarship that are competing for a job, then I let them be live for a scrimmage. If we don't, then I don't. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, they're competitors, so they always want to play. They want to show what they can do. So I think they they wouldn't mind it. But uh, you know, a lot just depending on your guys. You know, I mean, when you look at our quarterback situation, Tyler, who's played in a lot of games. I mean. <laughs> I don't need to see him get hit. He's been hit plenty of time underneath the chin by SEC people, so uh, he knows what's happening. And Dak's kind of a, got that tough guy attitude. So, um, you know, when you you have that, those two guys, I don't need to check toughness at the quarterback position. You looking forward to tomorrow for the stadium announcement and all that? Uh, yeah. yeah, I love yeah, press Jack with Joe on that one. <laughs> I love press conferences. Yeah, is that what it's about? I've been, yeah. Stadium announcement. There's announced. a press conference tomorrow at 11 a.m. Give the details. Stay, stay tuned. You don't know. <laughs> Make sure everybody shows up. Did you see? Maybe I'll have a special announcement at the press conference tomorrow. Teaser. Oh, back to the. I'm uh, going to announce. Oh, you got to show up tomorrow at 11 to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm announcing who's going to. Oh, show up at 11 a.m. We're going to scrimmage stats. <laughs> <laughs> if, we're, if we're done here, I can stop. But uh, no, back to the, the scrimmage yesterday, you see some of that variety from the receivers we've talked about with the, the mix of youth experience, big guys, small guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm pleased. I, I'm, I've been pleased more with the older guys than the younger guys. I mean, I think the younger guys are still developing. Uh, and obviously we know they have playmaking ability. But I, I think, you know, I mean, you look at guys like Bumpus and Chris Smith and Arcido that have started for three years now or something. Uh, I, I like their demeanor, their attitude towards practice, their, their, their hunger. You know, I mean, you can kind of, 
um, they can kind of, you know, the, some of those guys sometimes they get older hit cruise control. Not that they're trying to take it easy. It's, they're just so comfortable with everything going on that they don't really push themselves. But those guys have really pushed themselves. I've been pretty pleased with them so far. Another recruiting question. I know you can't talk in particular names, but well, they, the guys you've had leave, even going back to Nick Redmond and ones like that up to this year, mm -hmm. you, are, you already have a small number of seniors, but even a smaller number of juniors. Are those yeah. scholarships you look to use in this year's class or just push back to 14? Well, we're always trying to balance things out um, for us, you know, and it's uh, very much, I guess, you know, when you look, when you get into the personnel question, you, you get very much like an NFL GM, you know, you have to be balanced and unfortunately there's no free agency. So, you know, I mean, if, if you get, if you lose a position, you know, I can't go out in the free agent market right now and go replace a position. So you're always looking at that balance of what you have to get you through the seasons uh, and in the future. You know, and positional balance, it's always a couple of years out in, in advance. And, uh, you know, because it's, you know, you take like the receiver position this year. It's been something been very nervous about coming with five seniors. You know, that we're going to have to go replace five guys that have played a lot. And it was hard to replace them before. You know, I think we probably have been a little bit heavy on number of receivers on the roster uh, than we are this year in preparation of losing all these guys next year. And, uh, you know, that's where the balance always comes into play for us. Are you good?